What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, we had our first ever town square yesterday, so not a town hall, but a town square, which lasted about an hour and had Ron, Rondon, uh, Aggie, and Weirdbeard on just to chat about pretty much anything that the community wanted to talk about. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing five biggest takeaways for these. I wanted to do one for the first one just to let people know my thoughts on the format, how it went. And I, I got to say, for the most part, I actually really enjoyed it. It's an hour, so it's not anything too long. Uh, there were a lot of questions, so you know Aggie wasn't able to get to all of them. Actually, well, no, let me let me rephrase that. Aggie stayed uh, a little bit extra, right? So there was like 15 minutes extra in order to try and get all the questions. But the cool thing is, if you have a question, you can actually jump on and talk about it live on stream, right? You just unmute your mic or ask for uh, at, like I think it's like ask for permission to speak on the uh, the Discord uh, stage. And they, you know, there, there were several people who came up and, t and uh, talked. So I, th I thought it was fun. I think that this is going to be a great format moving forward just as a touch point with the community. So while I am sad that we don't get town halls, I am hopeful that the town squares can grow or maintain something that is fun and engaging for the community. Now, here's the thing. Everything that's in the town square is going to be unofficial. Right. These are just ideas, things that are being thrown out. So all these uh, items that you see or hear me talking about, they're not, you know, they're not in a town hall. They're not presented formally. There's no dates. There's nothing like that. And a lot of things are just ideas of where they would like uh, the game to go, the game, the community, the economy to go in the long run. So. Let me go ahead and just jump in to the five biggest takeaways, the five things that kind of jumped out to me that I thought were worth sharing with you, even if, you know, it's just in a town square format rather than, you know, something official. Because as we know, even with the town halls, those used to lead to some kind of official thing, even though things could uh, eventually change. But we'll just go ahead and dive in. Uh, number one. When does Aggie vote full power? He he tried to be very clear about this. And so he he actually mentioned that he and Matt go back and forth and and fundamentally disagree because Matt was saying that, you know, we shouldn't be voting full power on how we feel. And Aggie said, well, if I have the SPS and I bought the SPS and it's mine, then I'm going to vote how I feel. And so what Aggie did say, though, he's not going to vote full power every single time. Usually he'll just vote with the aggregate account on uh, on a proposal if he feels he just wants to show the community where uh, whether he supports or doesn't support it. But Anything that has to do with DEC burning, which is part of the buzzword of the year, flywheel, anything that has to do with DEC burning, he's going to go all in on uh, on voting for that. So we got a little bit of clarity. Again, I, I, nobody can really hold him to it. <laughs> he can always change his mind. But for people wondering how and when Aggie votes, he was very clear about how he views proposals and when uh, when he should and should not use the full power. Now, again... It's Aggie's SPS. He can use it however he likes. I'm not one of those people that says, oh, the team should or shouldn't vote. I mean, well, whatever. Like, it's like if, if they have the SPS, they own, they own the, uh, the assets that got them the SPS or they're earning it or whatever. You know, pe people can vote however they feel. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, so I guess I do appreciate the fact that he was clear about the, uh, when he does vote full power and when he doesn't. A lot of times, you know, whenever, whenever it's like a, a game-related item, he'll vote however he feels because keep in mind, from a, from a, I guess like a protocol standpoint, we don't have any kind of control over anything outside of the game as SPS stakers or anything inside the game technically. Really, the only thing that we, we have control over as SPS stakers is the SPS token, vouchers, and the, uh, the DAO or the node license holder tokens. So... That is that is the first thing, you know, for anybody wondering. I thought that was an interesting thing that Aggie kind of took the time to dive into for the town square. Number two, this is a really interesting idea. I forgot the name. I think it's like Avogachi or something. But Aggie was talking about another game that is also doing proposals. And they have found a way to, in, uh, to gamify it to increase engagement. So uh, what does he mean by gamify? Well, right now we have proposals all the time. We have pre-proposals and then the official proposals. It would be cool if there was something in game that you got, some kind of benefit. Again, not not financial or monetary. In fact, it shouldn't be financial or monetary, 
but if you were able to get something in your account for participating in the proposals, because the whole point is to get people engaged. Right now, you know, there's there's 500 million SPS staked, uh, I think, or you know, maybe close to 600 million SPS staked, and we we'll get anywhere between like 250 to 600 million SPS that vote on a proposal. So I, I would love to see that number go higher. I'm sure the team would love to see that number go higher. You know, we should be well above 50% of people that have SPS staked trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to help guide the direction of the game. But if we were to, to get something, and I don't know what the idea is, maybe you get, uh, you know, some some kind of title, some kind of, you know, soulbound token, some kind of, uh, sorry, not token, but so just just something for your account. Maybe there's like a leaderboard or whatever it is. Like every time you you participate in a vote, you know, you get uh, you get a point in this in this leaderboard that's just for the proposals. Right. I, I think that would be I think that'd be kind of cool. So, again, I don't know what it will be. I don't know how much dev time will go into it. It doesn't seem like high priority, but if they can come up with something that is low dev time, easy to implement, but gets people to actually vote their conscience and gets people to participate and be engaged in the direction and the future of the game, I think that that will be awesome. Uh, number three, somebody somebody straight up asked, like, you know, what, what are we doing about the voucher supply? Uh, somebody actually came on and talked about it, uh, not just typed in a question in chat, but was asking, like, you know, the vouchers were a great idea for Chaos Legion, but then there wasn't much direction with them afterwards. So what, like, what are what are we doing <laughs> with them? Because we're printing 40,000 a day, which comes out to like 14 and a half million, maybe actually a little bit more than 14 and a half million per year. And while we do have some voucher sinks, a la Tower Defense Packs and Rift Watcher Packs, it's really not enough because if the demand for those items aren't there, well, then the supply just keeps on growing and growing and growing. So Aggie brought up something interesting. And, uh, you know, again, I don't know that I agree with him. In fact, I would say that I, I kind of disagree uh, just thinking about it on the surface. But his whole point was, well, we're, we're in a place now where we've been in this bear market for a long time and people keep complaining about the team just trying to sell a bunch of stuff, right? So it's like, okay, yes, the community has been complaining about that. I don't, I don't disagree there. Community has been complaining about it, but it's like, well, we still want to have. It's, it's not, it's not stuff. <laughs> like, we, we don't necessarily want things to buy, but we want things to redeem our vouchers for. You know, I, I talked about this on a recent live stream where it's just like we, for at some point, vouchers became. Uh, vouchers went from being like the access token, like, oh, you know, vouchers are going to get you all the cool stuff in the game to the discount token. And both Aggie has said that in a town hall. And then I heard 16 uh, bit say it in one of the like the, the Twitter spaces that I attended. And so it's like, well, when did like, you know, people don't think about, you know, discount tokens or coupons, we'll call it right. People don't think about coupons and like exclusive access tickets the same way. Th those go for very different values. And most of the time, people don't even care about coupons. They'll go and pay full price rather than taking the time to go and buy, you know, to, to clip coupons or whatever the case is. So, you know, I that approach to vouchers, I can understand. They're not trying to sell a bunch of things, but we just want cool stuff. We, you know, the voucher shop has been talked about for 18 months already, <clears throat> maybe even longer than that. Because vouchers came out in like October of of 2021, so you know ultimately I, I really feel like the voucher the vouchers should be looked at. I don't know if the team is looking at it. I I actually think that they are, um, and we're just complaining about it. But the the thing is, my hope is that whether it's for guilds, whether there's an actual voucher shop that comes into play at some point. What's what's frustrating now is we we just have this oversupply of this token, which you know, the whole reason people bought nodes is because they were giving out vouchers and vouch like the node licenses should have never given out vouchers. But if they hadn't been given out vouchers, would people have bought node licenses? Probably not. Right. So we're just in a weird position now where, you know, what we're seeing is uh, <laughs> what we're seeing is like utility go from token to token. Because um, let's be real. If I, you know, if I'm going to be if I'm going to be a uh, a hundred percent honest with you here, what's the utility thing now? Or like, what's sorry, what's the access thing now? It's Rooney. So all of a sudden, like, you know, SPS was supposed to be the token that gave you access. Then it went to vouchers because you could sell that access if you didn't want it. And now Rooney is the thing that's supposed to get you stuff in the future. And vouchers are like an afterthought. So that's that's a well, look, like I said, that's a concerning trend for me. And I do hope that it is addressed sooner than later. I know it may not be top priority, especially with land coming out, but it's like 
I, I'll be honest, like I don't, I don't want to ever buy anything, you know, full price anymore <laughs> because it's like, well, let me, let me see where things shake out. Right. I went, I went heavy on nodes after the, uh, after or in tranche one. And part of it was like, well, I want to make sure that I have some kind of voucher supply because they devalued my SPS. So I want to make sure that I'm continuing to earn vouchers. But now look at me sitting on all these vouchers or selling all these vouchers with you know nothing to spend them on, or at least nothing that I want to spend them on. So sure, you can look at me and say that I'm impatient. Absolutely. But you know, there's if we're gonna get one thing every three months to spend vouchers on, that one thing that we actually want, uh, to me, that's like not enough. That's not creating enough demand for supply. But that's my little rant. So I'll continue. I'll I'll, uh, I'll finish it off there. Number four, uh, Dave McCoy was on. So shout out to Dave McCoy. Great. Uh, this this is an interesting suggestion. I I, I want to say it's a great suggestion. But I know there's going to be people who are very much against it. But the idea was when you have soulbound uh, uh, cards or soulbound items, you can't necessarily make them unsoulbound forever. So you can't turn them into NFTs. What you can do is you can pay a small fee and then make them temporarily unsoulbound for like a month, let's say. So if you had all these cards, and you wanted to sell them, for example, or you wanted to transfer or trade them, you could you could pay a, a little bit of DEC or, or voucher maybe, right? And make them temporary unsold bound for like a month. And in that time frame, you could sell them, you could transfer them, you could do whatever you wanted, right, with them. But after that point in time, those specific uh, cards would go back to being soul bound. Now, why, am I, why would I love this or support it or, or get excited? Well, because I I want more DEC sinks, I want more DEC burning, um, and so people spending more is uh, is an idea that I really love. Right now, the flip side of this, and I'll try to strongman that argument, is well, if they're NFTs and we're paying for them to be um, to become NFTs, then they shouldn't go back to being soul bound. Right? We should be able to essentially pay for them. And then, and then it's it, right? Why are they adding more fees? Why are they doing all these things? Why are they making it a perpetual fee if I ever want to do something with the card? And I get it. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that I like the other argument better where we just create massive, massive DEC syncs. Because for me, right, and my play style, I, I, at this point in time, I don't have any intention of ever selling my, my Soulbound reward cards. Like, they're going to stay in my in my deck forever because I don't have them maxed out. Now, if I had more than enough, would that be interesting? Sure, but like, I'm not looking to constantly be moving them around and transferring them from account to account and just turning them, like they don't need to be NFTs for me. I like playing the game as long as they're attached to my account, that's cool. If I pay a small minimal fee, maybe, maybe it's not the entire like burn value, right? Maybe it's just like a, a fraction of the burn value. And uh, you, you pay that because I want to transfer it to another account or let's say I have some extras. So I pay that, hopefully sell it within 30 days or whatever. You know, 30 days is just arbitrary. But you, you, uh, you know, you sell it, transfer it, whatever you need to do. And then, and then it's done, right? Where, wherever it ends up, it's going to be sold bound and it'll either be in a different account for me or it'll be in someone else's account. and It'll be their problem to unlock it whenever they want to move it. So I don't know. I, I like it. I think it creates... Uh, additional sinks for DEC in the long run, but I can see the argument against it. It's just something that was very much outside the box. And, uh, you know, shout out to Dave for, for kind of thinking, thinking outside the box. Again, I know not everybody will agree, but I, I like the idea personally. Okay. And then lastly, just to top things off here, somebody asked Aggie how the company is doing. And he said a one year runway considering the market stays where it's at. If we nuke and go all the way, you know, back down and de uh, not, not DEC, well, DEC maybe, but BTC, Bitcoin starts setting, uh, you know, another all-time low or at least cycle low, lower than 15 and a half K, uh, then we'll probably have some problems. But I would say if that were to happen, you know, all of crypto and probably even the macro economy would be struggling because Bitcoin's looking good right now. Uh, we're sitting about 30 K. There's a lot of adoption happening, especially uh, outside of the U.S., and I, you know, I, I think that we're hopefully at the start of another bull run. Now, that's not to say that bull run is going to happen like in the next couple of months. I still think we don't get the real uh, rocket fuel until after the halving, which is in uh, middle of next year, 2024. 
But at this point, you know, hopefully we're not going to see new lows again for the cycle below 15 and a half K. We'll probably see some some choppiness over the next year. But if it's a slow and steady upward grind and then we start hitting new all time highs in late 2024 or 2025, that would be phenomenal. But uh, a one year runway is where we're at. So, you know, and I would say. I would say the team's runway, and this is me speculating, the team's runway would probably be even longer than that based on comments from, you know, like Matt in previous town halls where it's just like if they have to let more people go, obviously that would suck. But this is not something that they're going to let just die, right? So I, I would say that if they had to extend their runway, they'd probably have to do the difficult decision of, you know, letting more people go, slowing down development, but keeping the lights on and therefore extending their runway. It's just going to be like more of like an emergency runway that they would need in order to get the uh, the economy and the game economy back into a better place. But I'm, I'm super excited. You know, we're, we're hopefully not too far away from land. Um, you know, somebody did ask when land. I, I, I didn't want to make it a thing here because it's already, you know, people have been asking about it. But I will say, <laughs> we'll say this. Aggie said about what, when land. Uh, I, I'm just going to quote quote him or paraphrase him on here so you can draw your own conclusions. He did say that hopefully in the next month or you know a month from now, so end of July, they'll have a better idea of when they can release land. So take from that what you will, but uh, you know my my quick my quick thought was like okay, well, the end of the end of next month is really close to the end of the age and if we're just going to be figuring out where, you know, or when land can come out a month from now, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, Age of the Phoenix is is going to happen, but uh, you can go back and listen to you can go back and listen to, to his exact wording on that. I just wanted to give the paraphrase for folks. So, didn't mean to end it on a on a sour note, uh, but I, you know, at this point, I just hope land comes out before the end of the year, and if it does, that'll be great. And uh, hopefully we'll get land 2.0 sometime in 2024. Uh, but nothing, nothing in my opinion is going to take off really until the Bitcoin having. And at the end of the day, you know, it's really on on Splinter Lens to make sure that they can uh, they can make sure they don't miss the wave is what I wanted to say. But we're seeing DEC do well. Hopefully we'll start to see you know some of these proposals come in and uh, and do some awesome things. Uh, Rift watches for DEC a bunch of other stuff. So that is all I have for you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will catch you all in the next one and I will see you around the game. Take care.